We know the makeup of India A squad, which will travel to Australia to play two four-day games. What does it tell us about the direction in which the selectors may be looking about India's squad for the Border Gavaskar Trophy? Shashank Kishore joins us on ESPN Fick Info Newsroom to break things down for us. Shashank, uh, so much to uh, go through. Uh, lots of players who are knocking on the national uh, doors. But let's start from that new vacancy that has been created of the backup opener, which has only gained prominence with the knowledge that Rohit Sharma will miss one of the first two tests. Yeah, in um, you know normal course, uh, you'd think that Shubman Gill, who has opened the batting for India in Test cricket and also has done that in Australia, uh, would kind of be a natural backup if required. But uh, you've seen in the ongoing uh, test against New Zealand and also Bangladesh that the team management believes that they don't want to really tinker with that role uh, with him being at number three. And that's one of the reasons why India will have to, you know, pick a backup opener for Australia. A uh, number of them have uh, put their hand up in recent times. Uh, among them, I think Abhimanyu Ishwaran stands a very good chance. I mean, four uh, first class games, four hundreds has started the domestic season with a bang. But also the body of work that he's put in at the first class level for over 10 years now. He's played 100 first class games, he's got 2700, uh, nearly 7000 runs. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of merit in picking someone like him who's gone through the grind, not for one or two seasons, but over a period of time. So he's uh, uh, been able to ride the highs and the lows. He's had a number of very good years, a number of very ordinary seasons. He's captain Bengal. So, in a sense, he's kind of a seasoned professional who has figured out a method for himself and has uh, shown those performances over time. Yeah, the others who will try to push their case against Ishwaran are uh, his captain on this trip, Ruturaj Gaikwad, and Sai Sudarshan, who too has had a stellar start to the domestic campaign. Let's focus on the next port of call, uh, Shashank, and that will be the left arm seamer. We have known that the selectors for a while have wanted to bring in a left-arm seamer into the test setup. Yash Dayal was with the squad for the Bangladesh test. Uh, he faces some competition from Khalil Ahmed. Yes, Yash Dayal has primarily uh, been looked at as somebody who's got the skill and that's why he was also fast-tracked into the test team uh, for the Bangladesh series. But it was slightly strange. Uh, maybe uh, not a bad move, really. Not, not really so strange after all that... Uh, he was left out because they felt there was more value for him, you know, playing in the Ranji Trophy rather than just carrying the drinks. So that's maybe one of the reasons why he didn't make uh, the squad this time around. Uh, Yash Dayal has put in a lot of work over the last couple of years. I mean, we all know the T20 side of things where, you know, the Rinku Singh incident, how that kind of was a fuel for his uh, comeback of sorts into the IPL and the kind of season he had, that he had with RCB. But quietly at UP, he's been going about bowling a lot in red ball cricket, 80-odd wickets in 25 first-class games. Um, it's not really the kind of record that makes you go, wow. But he's got the skill of moving the ball both ways. He's uh, pretty lively. He's worked on increasing his pace. And I think India realized that, uh, you know, their attack is complete. But they've always had this kind of fascination to bring a left-arm seamer at some available opportunity. So, in a way, since Zaheer Khan retired, India haven't had the kind of the left arm options at all in the test mix, uh, except for maybe T. Natarajan, who played one game on that tour of Australia. So, yeah. so Yash Dayal's put in the work in recent times. And I think uh, the question with him was, uh, you know, they wanted to see if he's capable of bowling long spells. And he ticked off that box in the Dulip Trophy. So, he's shown the ability to bowl long spells. And that was one of the key markers that Agar Karenko wanted to see. And he's been able to take that off. So, they think that a big performance is just around the corner. Yeah, there's also the subject of backup seamers. Doesn't matter left or right. Which will only gain further prominence if Shami doesn't make the trip for some reason. Uh, so, the number of seamers we might not know. But there's Mukesh Kumar who travelled to South Africa. There's Navdeep Saini who was part of the last tour to Australia. Uh, but also interesting to observe uh, Shashank. No room for Shardul Thakur who... Generally, when India have got into these overseas cycles, has been considered as that ideal fit because he gives you a fourth seamer who offers something with the bat. Yeah, Shardul Thakur has had to, you know, uh, his career hasn't exactly taken off the way you'd think uh, it should have, especially after the heroics you saw of him in Brisbane in uh, 2021. Partly that's because of form, it's also been because of injuries. He's also come back now uh, into first class cricket after a lengthy layoff because of a 
foot surgery. Uh, then he played the first round of uh, Ranji Trophy matches, was ill in that game. So he's kind of coming back into you know the rigors of first-class cricket now. Uh, so while it is tempting that uh, you want to pick someone who offers uh, batting depth as well as the ability to you know bowl and pick up wickets like Shardul has, I think uh, the selectors are massively excited by the rise of Nitish Reddy, uh, who who's, uh, whose first-class record isn't impeccable just yet because he hasn't played the kind of cricket that you think uh, he should have uh, to before getting the fast track. But uh, the selectors like what they see of him. Uh, he's now uh, transitioned into India's uh, T20 squad. He's done really well against Bangladesh. So so they see uh, a potential for him to be that um, link between the all the seam bowling all-rounder and you know the guy who can offer batting depth lower down if required. So uh, he's done really well for India so far in the opportunities that he's had. Uh, pretty well in the Dulip Trophy as well. His batting needs to come on a little bit, uh, at least in terms of red ball cricket. But he's shown in T20s that he can hit the ball long and you saw that in the IPL as well. So, I think Nitish Reddy's uh, evolution uh, purely on potential is a very exciting thing for India. And if he can make that step up and show the performances in these uh, games uh, in the run-up to the Test Series, and he'd be a very, very handy addition. Hmm. So, those are the headliners from this India A squad. Important to point out that it's not necessarily their performances on this tour which will dictate their fortunes because India squad for the Borogavska Trophy will actually is actually likely to be announced before these tests get away. This A side will play two four-day matches starting October 31st. And this will also be the squad which competes against the Indian squad in India's only warm-up before the Test Series opener in Perth. Thank you, Shashank Kishore, for your company.